When the Buddha had remained as long as he wished, at Ambapali's grove, he went to Beluva, near Vesali. There the Blessed One addressed the brethren and said, Mendicants, take up your abode for the rainy season round about Vesali, each one according to the place where his friends and near companions may live. I shall enter on the rainy season here at Beluva. When Buddha had thus entered on the rainy season, there fell on him a dire sickness, and sharp pains came on him even to death. But the Blessed One, mindful and self-possessed, bore his ailments without complaint. Then this thought occurred to the Buddha, it would not be right for me to pass away from life without addressing the disciples, without taking leave of the order. Let me now, by a strong effort of the will, subdue this sickness and keep my hold on life until my time has come. And Buddha, by a strong effort of the will, subdued the sickness and kept his hold on life until his time should come, and the sickness abated. Thus Buddha began to recover, and when he had quite got rid of the sickness, he went out from the monastery and sat down on a seat spread out in the open air. And his beloved Ananda, accompanied by many other disciples, approached where the Blessed One was, saluted him, and taking a seat respectfully on one side, said, I have beheld, Lord, how the Blessed One was in health, and I have beheld how the Blessed One had to suffer. And though at the sight of the sickness of the Blessed One, my body became weak as a creeper, and the horizon became dim to me, and my faculties were no longer clear, yet notwithstanding, I took some little comfort from the thought that the Blessed One would not pass away from existence, till at last he had left instructions as touching the order. Buddha addressed Ananda in behalf of the order, saying, What, then Ananda, does the order expect of me? I have preached the truth without making any distinction between doctrine hidden or revealed. For in respect of the truth, Ananda, the Tathagata has no such thing as the closed fist of a teacher who keeps some things back. Surely, Ananda, should there be anyone who harbor the thought, it is I who will lead the brotherhood, or the order is dependent on me, he should lay down instructions in any matter concerning the order. Now the Tathagata, Ananda, thinks not that it is he who should lead the brotherhood, or that the order is dependent on him. Why then should the Tathagata leave instructions in any matter concerning the order? I am now grown old, Ananda, and full of years, my journey is drawing to its close. I have reached the sum of my days. I am turning eighty years of age. Just as a worn-out cart cannot be made to move along without much difficulty, so the body of the Tathagata can only be kept going with much additional care. It is only when the Tathagata, Ananda, ceasing to attend to any outward thing, becomes plunged in that devout meditation of heart, which is concerned with no bodily object. It is only then that the body of the Tathagata is at ease. Therefore, Ananda, be you lamps to yourselves, rely on yourselves, and do not rely on external help. Hold fast to the truth as a lamp. Seek salvation alone in the truth. Look not for assistance to anyone besides yourselves. And how, Ananda, can a brother be a lamp to himself, rely on himself only, and not on any external help, holding fast to the truth, as his lamp and seeking salvation in the truth alone, looking not for assistance to anyone besides himself. Herein, Ananda, let a brother, as he dwells in the body, so regard the body that he, being strenuous, thoughtful, and mindful, may, while in the world, overcome the grief which arises from the body's cravings. While subject to sensations, let him continue so to regard 
the sensations that he, being strenuous, thoughtful and mindful, may, while in the world, overcome the grief which arises from the sensations. And so, also when he thinks or reasons or feels, let him so regard his thoughts, that being strenuous, thoughtful and mindful, he may, while in the world, overcome the grief which arises from the craving due to ideas or to reasoning or to feeling. Those who, either now or after I am dead, shall be lamps to themselves, relying on themselves only, and not relying on any external help, but holding fast to the truth as their lamp, and seeking their salvation in the truth alone, and shall not look for assistance to anyone besides themselves. It is they, Ananda, among my bhikkhus, who shall reach the very topmost height. But they must be anxious to learn. You see, in life, in your life, when in doubt, listen to your heart, listen to your gut feeling. You must be the rock standing in the ocean. If you have no one to hang on to, be your own rock, be your own savior. That is the only way that the Buddha reached enlightenment. He was dependent on himself and his thoughts and his ideas about life. This is the final message that the Buddha left for us. To find enlightenment, look inward, and inward only, rely on yourself and not on the outer. You can know this secret, but you have to truly understand this secret with all of your being, with all of your atoms combined in your body, to truly become enlightened. This is Dare to Do Motivation Stories. Thanks for watching and stay blessed.